Everyone wants to know, currently, are you in love? Yeah. Are you single? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so two truths can still exist. <laughs> you can be in love and you can be single. I'm Viola Benson. Welcome to another episode of Too Tired to Be Crazy with me, your host. Um, this episode was brought to you by our sponsors. Um, okay, so today my special guest is Francesca Farrago. This beauty lives rent-free in your head. You know her as the main character on Too Hot to Handle Season 1. We all got obsessed with her body the first time we saw her in Season 1. Hands, now she has a really successful bathing suit, swimsuit line. She also has around 8 million followers on all of her social media c platforms combined. She is one of the top earners on OnlyFans and soon to be on Dream. You've seen her have sex on TV, cry on TV, laugh on TV, get dumped on TV. You followed her very public breakups and today she is back on my show. Welcome. <laughs> that was quite the intro. Thank you. I know. I wrote it while I was peeing. Um, we've lived together, traveled together. We shared a toothbrush before. We've shared underwear before. We've never shared a man, I don't think, yet. No. No, not yet. <laughs> We've shared saliva. I mean, there's really nothing we haven't done together. Um, but first, I kind of want to get right into it. And before I, I ask you questions that a lot of the fans were asking you, I thought we can just get into it and talk about Mexico since obviously it's not like we filmed a vlog. So this is probably like as best as it can get. Just talking about. Yeah, well, we were going to film this when we were there, but we were having too much fun and we just couldn't. We didn't have time. Right. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people like are able to film. Like, I just feel like if you're recording every two seconds, there's no way you're having that much fun. You're not. Yeah. You're not enjoying and living in the moment as much if you're like constantly recording. Yeah. Um, did you ever think we would get I mean, this was a fan question, but I'll just ask it now. Did you ever think we would get this close? No, I, I mean, kind of. Really? But I know you didn't. You didn't think we would get this close. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> especially after I moved out you told me that you thought you were never gonna see me again once I left when Francesca moved out I was in my own mind I was upset with Romy her dog which I love now which is so weird um and I remember I was like looking for Jessica and she was just like you're gonna miss me when I'm gone and I was like no I won't <laughs> something like that and I really thought we were never gonna speak again in my head but then you just continued like you're really good at just you know following up or just keeping you're very calm like Francesca is about her she doesn't she doesn't really have reactions so she constantly like stays very calm it's very like if you ever see her get mad like that's when it's scary and you're just like oh shit because she's always so calm but I, I didn't expect us to get this close and then we just like also travel together I mean we've traveled so much together at this point yeah this past trip was so much fun yeah Mex well first of all our birthday was fun when we had our birthday in Miami that was like one of the best trips I've ever had it was like amazing so much fun but Mexico was like really fun mm -hmm. okay so she basically you were ha you're having troubles with your visa currently and you can't you can't you can't really come back to live in LA so you were going to Mexico first from London yeah my I applied for my visa I rushed it and it didn't get, I was supposed to be back in LA um, now, but my visa didn't get approved. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm stuck in Mexico. We're refiling for it at the end of the week. And then after we refile, we have 15 days because I put premium processing on it to get an answer. So hopefully after those 15 days, it can come in because there's some filming that I want to get done and I need a visa for it. But if it doesn't come in, I'll just be in Mexico for longer. But I am in Miami right now because I can come as a tourist I just can't work while I'm here I was just having some like really two bad weeks um with just personal things happening and then Francesca invited me to come to Mexico and I was just like fuck it okay so before we get into Mexico like we did end up like hanging out with Francesca's ex-boyfriend which is so random but can we talk about how awkward it is when your friend goes through a really messy breakup, all the friends grow to hate this guy. You all talk, sh I mean, as a friend, you're going to talk shit about this guy. I mean, I've publicly spoken shit about this guy. I've never met him in my life. I don't know if you knew that I've never met him before. 
So it's going to be my first time meeting. And I hate how awkward it is as a friend that when your friend starts talking to her ex again that she swore she never will, you have to be like, okay. And after you were like, oh, he sucks. Oh, I hope, I hope this, I hope this. Oh my God, he's dead to me. And then you have to meet him up in Mexico and you have to be like, I have to be like, oh my God, hi, so nice to meet you. I, I've heard so much about you. It's such a pleasure. And I feel like such a, like an asshole, you know, it's so awkward. Yeah. I feel like it was awkward for all of his friends as well. Like it was just like, no one ever expected that we would hang out again, I guess. Like it was the last thing anyone thought would happen. It was the last thing I thought would happen. Yeah. I mean, you guys went through a public breakup, a lot of shit talking on both ends, more on his end. Oh, wow. I'm such a good friend. <laughs> I can't help myself. It's like automatic. <laughs> it was really, it was, it was a nightmare. It was literally a nightmare. A little lawsuit between yeah. you two. I mean, it was like a whole thing. And then Crazy. Next thing you know, lawyers, like all this stuff. Yeah. Did you ever think you would be randomly hang out with? I never thought that I would see him again. And I was really sad about that. Like I did an interview when I was with Demi and he was asking me questions about Harry and I was just thinking like, it's, it's really sad to think that this person was so important to me. And I genuinely thought that I was never going to see him again. I was like, that's sad, but it's crazy how things change. And I don't know. It's just wild. Like life is just a journey and you kind of have to like take it day by day. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's, it is really hard, but I remember when, when you and I were talking and I was just like, Oh, I'm kind of nervous to meet Harry hopefully like I'm not mean to him blah, blah blah and you even said you're like Harry is very charming like no matter how much you thought you hated him like once you meet him you're gonna like him he's hot as fuck he's really sexy yeah and he's so big yeah I mean when we saw him you looked at me and you're like I want to climb him like a tree <laughs> okay yeah, I mean, he's really tall. He has a really nice accent, Australian accent, and he is very charming. And like when I met him, I was so fond of him that for a second, I completely forgot anything that happened between you guys. And I was just like, oh, I really like him. He's so nice. Yeah. That's what I, I like. Literally, when I saw him again, I forgot everything bad that, that happened as well. I was just like, oh, like what? We hated each other. I completely forgot. And that's how it feels now. Like, obviously, there's like all these emotions that are still there, but I'm really not focusing on what happen happened in the past. I'm just going to focus on moving forward and like seeing what happens. Yeah. Okay. So before I get into questions, let's get into Mexico. Okay. So first you picked me up from the airport. It was so sweet. And I saw Romy and then, okay, can I, this is, I need to set the record straight. Not that I need to, but this is how sweet Francesca is. Not only did she invite me to Mexico and then thanks to birdie travel, like I did fly for free first class. You guys should check them out. But she she rented this out apartment in Cancun, a super fancy, super nice apartment. It was three bedrooms and two of the bedrooms, three all three bedrooms were taken. And Francesca was so kind. When I came to stay with her, she gave me her room, which was the main master bedroom. Like... I was shocked. That was so nice. And she went and she she was sharing a room with Chris, which um, he's one of her BFFs and also does her hair and makeup. That's why she always looks so beautiful. So you guys should check out his Instagram. Um, but I, I was like so shocked because I was I literally could have slept on the couch, but she gave me her main bedroom, had the most beautiful view. She didn't ask me to pay for anything. She was supplying all the food, all the drinks like it was honestly like I I'm very sentimental person. I really appreciate like little things like that. And and I think it's really nice when people just do things without even asking or even being like, oh, look what I did. Like she she never asked for anything back, like just my company. And I thought that was the sweetest thing ever. You're so sweet. I'm glad you had a good time. Oh my God, the best. I was, well, plus when I came to Mexico, like, I don't know what it is about Mexico. It's so humid that it like clears your skin. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really does. That's true. Okay, so like first we did Cancun. We went to like some amazing restaurants. We drank, we partied. To be honest, at this point, I feel like I don't even remember Cancun. All I can remember is Tulum. Am I, is it, am I crazy? Like did something happened in Cancun that I missed? Cause I can't remember. Cancun was just like chill and fun. And we went to like really fancy restaurants and like had a good time. And then Tulum was like the shit show. Like Tulum was like the partying and like the madness and the day parties. And yeah, that. Tulum is so, we were talking how it's day and night between Cancun and Tulum, like mm -hmm. the environment, the people that. So yeah, then we got to Tulum. 
It's very humid there. And then um, what day did we go to Tulum? Saturday. Wow, we were only there. I was only there for two days. Yeah, we were only there for two days. Felt like a lifetime. It really did. Okay, okay. So we go to Tulum Saturday. Then we got ready to go out and we went to dinner. Um, It got kind of awkward because like Francesca and Harry were already in touch. Yeah, he flew to Cancun the week prior to hang out with me for a few days to make sure we got along. And then he came back the following week with all of his friends for his birthday. So I hadn't seen like any of his friends or met half of them. So it was a little awkward for sure. And it was also hard to like hate Harry because like I was feeling lonely. Um, I stopped talking to some guy and Harry brought his hot friends and I was just like, uh, you know, maybe we should give Harry a chance. (laughs) (laughs) His friends are really cute. Yeah. um, So we were eating at the restaurant and it was a little awkward because we weren't sure how we're going to get all get along with one another. We had Harry get a separate table from us at first so to be with his friends while well, we were with our friends but it was a little awkward because we're kind of like almost across from each other so we could see what the other people were doing and it was even awkward when we first said hi to to each other so awkward I wanted to die I was I did power shots I did like five shots like before dinner came I'm like I have the worst anxiety like they all hate me like do they like me like oh my god like what's going on like I was extremely nervous. Well, well, Francesca, also when Francesca drinks, she, I'm not going to say it's like day and night, but not day and night, but Francesca does become a conspiracy theorist. I feel like when she drinks, suddenly it's like everyone's against her and this, all these things are happening that they're not happening. And you kind of have to be like, it's like, it feels like you kind of have to like, like hold her off of a, like a ledge before she does something, you know, like in her brain, she's like, oh, everyone hates me. No one, these, these, no one likes me because this person looked at me weird and blah, blah. And I'll be like, dude, let's have fun. Chill. Yeah. I have more, anxi- like I have anxiety sometimes when I drink, I kind of think that people like more people are staring at me or more people are looking and judging and But it depends. Like, it's like, that's the point where I'm like a few shots deep. But then when I get to the point where I'm like blackout, then like nothing matters. Like, like at the end of the night, like I think me and Harry were like, our bodies were like conjoined and we were just like making out and like swaying together in the middle of the restaurant in front of everyone there. Like, like hundreds of people were just like watching us. And I was like, that's embarrassing. But like thinking about it, like, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, it started off as like, it was kind of awkward. And I was like, go, go talk to Harry. And then I feel like his friends were like, go talk to Francesca. Like, come on, go. And it felt like it was like a sixth grade, like dance. And everyone's like, go dance with her, go dance with her. And it was like kind of awkward. But then I think, I think like we loosened up. Like, I'm plus also like I was going through my own thing. Francesca was kind of, you know, it's really scary to see your ex-boyfriend with all of his friends. And you're like in the same place together. And you feel like people are staring at you. But then um, to loosen up, like we, Francesca and I just like, I tried to make her feel better by dancing on her lap and making out with her. And then that helped her loosen up. I completely forgot, by the way, that happened. That was so much fun. Me and you had such a good time together. We had so much fun together. And then she finally like loosened up. And then she we went to uh, talk to their um, to Harry and his friends. I found love. You (laughs) kidding. (laughs) It was funny also, like, Francesca was so drunk, and I was, like, ending it with some guy, and I didn't know what to text him. Francesca is like, oh, I got this. She sends a text on my behalf, literally being like, I never want to be associated with you ever again, whatever else she said. And I totally thought it made sense, and literally the next day, I was like, oh, my God, Francesca, do you think, like, I made a mistake sending that text? And she was like, what text? (laughs) And I was like, you're fucking kidding me. And she was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, was I drunk? Uh, I was like, yeah. She's like, oh, I don't remember sending that text. And I was like, lit thanks okay (laughs) but i mean sometimes drunk me knows what's up no you weren't wrong so like i ended up with some guy and i was like sad about it for two seconds but then my eyes caught someone else and i was like oh who's that guy i hate that i'm telling the story do you want to tell the story of what happened at the table you tell the story okay I went to the bathroom. We're all having fun. At one point, Francesca and Harry were literally, yeah, became became one person just sucking each other's 
faces off, but they're really cute. Like they're, I mean, you you can deny it. Like they are so cute together. I hate admitting it myself. In two weeks, if it doesn't work out, I'm gonna be like, I never liked the guy, but today I'm like, <laughs> I love him. He's the best. He's great. Okay, so then everyone at our table is gone. I hate this part. Everyone at our table suddenly disappears and I'm walking around the restaurant and I'm, I'm so embarrassed to admit this, but luckily this guy's never going to listen to this podcast. I, I'm assuming, hopefully not. I'm, I, I don't know if there's a way for me to block him from listening. But anyway, this guy didn't even know that I was interested in him. One of Harry's friends. Um, he hit on me and I was really like, who is that guy? Because he had a British accent and that was enough for me. I was like, I love, wow. Okay. So I love British men now. And I was like, I, I was looking for him uh, through the restaurant like a fucking loser. And you already went home. And I remember I was looking for him. At that point, I lost everyone. Everyone's gone from our table. I'm holding a random bottle in my hand of uh, tequila. I finally find Francesca and Harry. And I'm like, Francesca, what's up? Then the, the waiters from the table walk up to us. And they're like, hey, you guys need to pay for this bill. And by the way, Francesca and I didn't order anything. Like we had a bi- a, two bites of beets bites of each other's faces faces she her main course was harry's face and then a bunch of tequila shots that's all so they're like you guys have to pay for the bill and we're like no that's not us like it's whoever order all the stuff like he's probably around the restaurant i literally turn around for two seconds francesca's now gone i have no idea where anyone is i see francesca standing outside with harry i thought for a second she was gonna ditch me i was like freaked out i go up to francesca and harry and i'm just like where is everyone like what are we gonna do so we're so wasted at this point we're almost blacked out we go across the street and we start walking me francesca and harry the waiters start running after us and they come up to us they go they look at us and they go lady this is so embarrassing do you understand how embarrassing this is for us that we have to do this with you and (laughs) so embarrassed and I was like do you understand how embarrassing this is for us that we have to do this with you we thought that they were still in the restaurant like we were like there's no way they just the guys just dipped like there's no way they left so they're maybe in the bathroom they're still there like for sure that's why we were leaving like we obviously thought that they were still in there like the last thing we would have assumed is that they would have literally left us there by ourselves Yeah, one of the guys was like staying with us and he was taking care of us. He knows I don't speak Spanish. He knows I don't know anyone in Mexico. Like I didn't think he was going, like I would understand if maybe he was leaving Francesca's because she has Harry and like he'll take care of her. But like I literally had no one there. So and we were friends. I just didn't think like, I was like, there's no way like this, these men are, that were with us, they're gentlemen. Like there's no way they're going to like leave us. Like, come on with the bill, throwing stuff we didn't eat. Anyway, it seems like they did. And Francesca um, was just like, you know, fuck this. And she put her car down. She paid um, around close to $2,000 for a table for the meal that we never even touched. Isn't that crazy? It was just crazy when they ran after us and they go, lady, this is embarrassing. Do you know how embarrassing this is for us? I'm surprised they, because it wasn't us ordering anything, but I feel like when people order bottles, like the people that were at the table were ordering like 10 bottles, like, I thought that like there would have been a credit card put down or something or like the promoter who got us the table would have like taken someone's credit card. Like, I don't know why it was on us. Like I wasn't even sitting there, but I mean, it is what it is. It's, it was funny. I guess now it's a funny story, but. (laughs) Then we end up having to walk a million miles. We get in a cab. We then end up somehow for whatever reason going to Harry's house. At this point, I just like, I just wanted to kill myself. I was just like, I felt I felt stranded. We were, yeah, we were in the middle of the jungle. So we were not getting home. There's no way to call a taxi. It was like two in the morning. They only take cash. We didn't have any cash on us. They were staying in a really beautiful house. And then our house was like 40 minutes from Harry's house. So like, yeah. You're a trooper. You took one for the team. Yeah, well, I was kind of miserable like being there. And I was just like, great. Like, I have no idea I'm getting home and I have to be stuck in this house. Like, I want to take off my makeup. I want to take off this uncomfortable dress. But then the guys there ended up being really nice. One of the guys I met there, it was like good conversation with him. But then I was just like, listen, there was two other girls there. And I remember I was just like, listen, I'm not going to have sex with you. And I looked at the girls and I was like, I was like, is one, are, are you guys, are you guys, is one of you planning on fucking him? Because it's not going to be me. So... And the girl's like, ha, ha, ha. And one of them was like, maybe. And I was like, okay, there you go. You're welcome. (laughs) Like, great. We got out of the way. I'm just so forward. So then ended up going. They gave me some bedroom to go to sleep in. And they gave me some, um, 
they gave me this guy gave me sweats to sleep in which by the way didn't know it was designer i was sleeping in Givenchy sweats and then when i got to the room i found that guy that i was like looking for i'm so embarrassed to admit it thank god yeah um but then like i really thought my night was ruined and then when i went to sleep in the room it was like these two um these two twin beds and he ended up being in one of the twin the twin beds and i was just like oh perfect like i get to talk to this guy like my night my night my night got better like i didn't hook up with him or anything but we literally like had a we talked like for hours that night before, until we both like fell asleep and he was just like adorable. And then I completely forgot about that other guy that I ended with because that's just like how my brain works. Like my brain is literally that song like I was busy thinking about boys, mm -hmm. boys. <laughs> like I literally like liked one guy when I came to Mexico, forgot about him. Then I was thinking about some other guy and did that. And then I saw this guy and I was just like, oh, my God love him and then talking to him he was just like such a cool dude i really just loved his personality and his accent and um he's just like adorable yeah he was great <clears throat> i'm a fan of him for sure and then what happened between you and harry that night i mean what do you think you played some games yeah chess specifically with your private parts exactly you had an adult sleepover there was a lot of checkmates who was winning? I don't know if there was a winner. I mean, if there was a winner, it would have been me. I won. Maybe. I mean, it felt like I won at least when I woke up. Yeah, maybe you, you were both winners. You both got to um, finish the game. The game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the next morning we woke up there. They had a chef. They brought food for all of us. Um, I completely forgot how mad I was about the night before. I was already so like goggly eyes over like that one guy. I literally like when I when I become like infatuated with somebody, I feel like I say the dumbest shit. I literally would look him and I'd be like, you just have such angelic curls. You have like little beautiful angel curls. <laughs> you look so like an sweet. That's the best compliment. <laughs> it's like you look like an angel. You're a British angel. Um, I don't even know what to nickname him. I'm just going to call him Rugby. Rugby. Yeah, I'll just call him Rugby. So we finally got a taxi to go home. We got home. We were so exhausted. And then we started to get ready to go to a day party. This was a power day because we got ready so quick. We went to the day party. We're blackout. We go home. And we didn't just get changed and go to dinner. We, after the day party, we fully showered fully got re-ready somehow in like an hour and then went back out on time like i don't know how that day even worked or managed because when when we walked home from the cab i was dying i had to take off my shirt because i was so hot i'm like get me out of here like i thought i was literally gonna die i'm like i'm going to bed and then somehow i had a pediolite and i was like bagatelle pool party let's go and then harry came and it was so much fun that was a good day it was so much. I actually didn't even realize it was all like literally almost this because because we went home. I like we didn't go to sleep until 4 a.m. So I didn't even realize that then we ended up going home at like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. And then we got we rallied by 1 p.m. We we're back at the day. We went to the day party bagatelle. I found in my purse a bar, a little bar. I don't know. What is it called? One little square of chocolate shrooms. I don't know how old it was, but I was like, oh, cool. This is a great idea. <laughs> and I took the shrooms during at the day party. And I remember like something hit me and I was just like not feeling well to the point that I couldn't see clearly. And I was just trying to act normal. And then I remember like Francesca and I had to go to the bathroom and I had to throw up and I was like throwing up. But again, we rallied somehow. I like redid my makeup in the bathroom. We took pictures with fans too. I like, I just came out of the bathroom when you guys were just standing in there and you were like, the girls were like, can we take a picture of both of you? As I'm like wiping the throw up from my mouth. I was like, right, okay. <laughs> They're so nice though. They were really sweet, yeah. Yeah, I redid my makeup a little bit in the bathroom, went back there. We kept drinking. Again, I'm like confused by that. I think, they, or maybe I was drinking water. And I remember like when Harry and his friends came, um, Harry was sitting next to us, like Francesca was sitting on Harry and the party would be going and everyone's laughing, I'm smiling. And then Harry would like, just look at me for a second and I would smile. And then I would get close to Harry and I would look him straight in the eyes and I would say, and I was like, 
man, I'm freaking out. Like I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm freaking out, man. You were like on another, like you were on Mars that day. Like I remember you just kept saying, you're like, I can't, I don't know, I'm on shrooms. And we'd be like, oh, do you want this? Or like, what's going on? You're like, I don't know, like I'm on shrooms. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it hit you like really hard. Yeah, it kept like coming in and out. And I don't know why it wouldn't go away. Like how much shrooms was in that chocolate. But I just remember it was so funny. Like Harry would just look at me and then I would just get close to him and be like, I'm freaking out, man. I'm not okay. I'm like losing, man, I'm freaking out. And he would just be like, oh my God. And then I would just go back to just sitting there and like staring at things, being normal. At one point I remember like, I just decided to run off to the beach and they tried to bring a security guard with me. And I was like, no, I need to be alone. And I just walked to the beach so I can like, listen to how peaceful the water was and I don't know what was going on in my head and then I was like right there's a party happening I cannot do any torts any sort of like that type of situation at a day party or anything because I just freak out like I have enough anxiety and like paranoia just on like alcohol and sober that if I like add anything else I die like I sit there and I'm like I just want to be alone like I couldn't I don't know how you did it like I would have left um yeah well again there's no ubers there so i really don't know that's what's bad about tulum is like you're really stuck like that's why i don't like it because like you're really stranded you can't get home like they only take cash it's just like a sketchy like if you're not with like a group of like guys that like can kind of like help you and take care of you like you do feel like kind of scared to be there which is why i prefer cancun because like me and you could go out and get cancun and have the best night ever and not have to worry about anything yeah but in tulum like you got to be careful yeah because it feels like a jungle and as a woman it just as a woman in general you're scared anywhere to be alone yeah yeah but then i remember i went back to the party harry and francesca were I mean, it was sweet. Like, Harry and his friends did come to our, our table and, like, they spent the, the day with us. And we had so much fun. Like, you and Harry, I don't think you guys even fought once. You guys were just... We so- didn't fight once that entire weekend. Or the weekend before. Yeah. I thought that was really cute. And, uh, and you guys were getting really close. Then I saw the British guy I was it was what sucks for me is that like one of the guys I was nice to and I feel like he was just constantly cock blocking me and I feel like an asshole saying that just constantly cock blocking me but like I would be staring it's like I'm staring at the British guy I want to go talk to him and then the other guy comes up to me and like starts talking to me I don't know about what and I'm just like are you serious right now and then I was like don't stop you know, because I just like once I'm focused on somebody there's no one else I want like that is what I want and plus like for me it's Francesca knows this too I'm more I'm more of a dater like I have to get to know people I have to date people and get to know them before I even think of sleeping with them it's very rare for me that like right off the bat I'm just so sexually attracted to them that I just want to like fuck that person and like with this guy I don't know what it was I would look at him and like all I could think about is like I want to fuck this guy I wish he knew that he didn't, but like that was my thought process. And I, I don't think I even knew how to handle it because it's, I'm not used to like, it's very rare for me to be attracted to somebody right off the bat. Um, so I remember he was there and everyone's like, Vico, talk to him because everyone knew that there was two guys that were, I thought were cute, kind of. But everyone was also voting for the British guy. And obviously it was a no brainer. I he was a winner winner. And uh, then I him and I made out wait you made out you didn't know i didn't know that you were there yeah i was in my own world though like well i think we're both very similar in that way when we're really fond of somebody like we're just so focused on them that's how i felt like i didn't even notice anyone else like i remember i just came up to him and he he would be talking to me and i would just be staring at his lips like talking to him because my head was just like oh my god when is he gonna kiss me when is he (laughs) Like, I'm ready. Let's go. He was really hot. You think so? Yeah, he was a babe. And he was so sweet, too. I know. He's so young. So, obviously, it's not like I was looking at him to date him. But, like, I was, like, you can just tell. Like, some guys, if they have, like, thick. So, like, guys who have muscular thighs, you can just tell that whatever's attached to those thighs, like, it's beautiful. (laughs) I don't know how to explain it. I feel I don't mean of course like I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way like I know if men were talking about women this way it would be messed up quote unquote but like guys I I haven't had sex in a year like at this point I feel like I can't I like can't hold back like now if I see something I want to fuck like I just like I want to pounce on it but then I think the shrooms just kept hitting me on and off so I was trying to be normal but 
I, I think at some points I would just go stand in the corner by myself and then just stare at everyone. And he probably thought it was really weird. Like, I didn't want to be around him, but it was more like, I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening. And then after that, we went home. I threw up again. We both showered. We felt like shit. We literally showered together because <laughs> we do everything together. We showered and we redid our makeup, our hair, got... Francesca just really cute that night. I was more dressed down. And then we went out to some restaurant to meet up with the guys, right? Yeah. I don't even remember how we got ready. Like, thank God for Chris. I could not have done my own hair, but I was in like a slick back pony during the day. And then we rewashed everything, like took, sh- took the shower. And then all of a sudden we were on our way to dinner. And I was like, I don't know how we pulled this off, but we did. Go us. Yeah. And then we went to celebrate Harry's birthday that night. And, um, it was like, I, I, yeah, I can barely remember that night at this point. I finally sobered up. It was like so nice to see clearly again. And then again, like it was just like food, alcohol, like everyone's around us. And there were these like sparkles there that no one talks about the sparkles. One of the sparkles like accidentally blasted onto my dress. It blasted onto my dress. And I thought I was being dramatic for a second. I was like, oh, my God, I felt fire on my boob. Like I thought it was crazy. But the next day I woke up and there was a hole in my in my dress on my left titty because it uh, if if like my dress set on fire i just didn't realize it because i was so drunk (laughs) that's a good story yeah some other girl there her hair got set on fire from the yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) okay but with you we went home so what happened what happened that night you and harry had another adult sleepover no that night i was so drunk he like got me changed like literally put me in his clothes and like put me to bed yeah that was really sweet the next morning Francesca was like so passed out and all the guys at the table except rugby man and except Harry they were talking kind of douchey I'm not gonna lie I mean sometimes being around guys and listening how they talk about women is like a little uncomfortable but they were just like this bitch this bitch blah 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 kind of being fuckboy and then Harry was just like all excited and he was just like oh my god like last night i um francesca was like so drunk like she couldn't even take off her own clothes so like i had to like change her and she was like no i'll do it and i was like no let me do it and then it's like i literally had to like take off her shirt and like put put like a shirt over her like her pjs for her she couldn't even do it and then i had like to tuck her into bed and like i kid you not none of the guys even asked and the guys just looked at him and they're like oh okay and then he's like and then they talked about the other girls again and then harry's like (laughs) It was just like so funny how like I just like had to change her and she was like so cute and she was like so passed out. And I again, like that's so cute. Like I again, I was just like, oh, how come we hate him? Like I like him. He's so sweet. (laughs) He's really sweet when he wants to be. Yeah, he is. It is true. So yeah, um, in the morning, Francesca finally eventually woke up and then we had to go because we had to get ready to go back to Cancun because I had a flight to catch. Was it hard to say bye to Harry? Yeah, I mean, you're with me. I cried the entire cab ride home, so. Okay, I didn't know if I was allowed to say that. (laughs) Yeah, it was hard. It was hard because it's hard to read a situation and I'm not really good with communicating. So I was like unsure of what was going on and I was just confused and I was like so hungover after a weekend bender of alcohol, like you're pretty depressed. Even if you're like the happiest person ever and nothing in your life is wrong. If you drink for three days straight, you're going to be a little bit depressed just because of the alcohol. So I was like definitely having a little bit of an alcohol come down and I was sad and we were, we were leaving and I wanted to spend the day with him, but I couldn't because I had to take Romy to the vet. We had to draw, drop you off at the airport and then we had to pack because then we were flying out the next day. So circumstances didn't really work in my favor to like stay and get some like clarification that I think I wanted and needed from him, but it all worked out like since then I feel like a lot more in a, in a better headspace, and I'm like super happy and like it's a scary thing especially when you get back with or start talking to an ex again it's like it's that feeling where and it sucks to say but as you get older and the way people date now you 
a person each person constantly needs to feel like they're in control because it's scary to lose control so always in the beginning with the girls i feel like it's the guys that beg for us back normally and then it's the girl that feels in control and she's like okay i i guess like i, I can walk away any any time i and like i'm gonna be fine and like i think francesca felt in control but then you know the more she hung out with harry and the, all of us saw it, we were so fond of him too we all like fell in love with him so like I think it's like that scary moment of like, oh, shit, I'm about to lose control of my own like feelings and I'm about to just like, you know, let myself go. And it's that moment that you get scared. Like, should I let myself go? Am I going to get hurt again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was really it was really sad. It was really sweet because especially Francesca, she she comes off very aloof. I'm similar in that way, too. It's with men when she dates them a lot of the time it seems very aloof because she holds her feelings um and her cards really close to her heart but she is one of those people like when she loves someone it's like sometimes scary to watch because she will do anything for them and that's why francesca gets scared when she starts to get catch feelings for somebody because even though they can't tell because she acts aloof like the minute like the minute she lets herself go like it is so hard to get her back from there. Like she will, if they're sinking down, she will sink down with them because like, she's literally such like a ride or die person. And she will, there's nothing she wouldn't do for somebody she loves. Yeah. I felt so in control up until that day. I was like, I got this, like, I'm fine. We're just going to be great friends. Like who knows? And then like that day I was like <laughs> all emotional, like a little wreck. Okay. So I guess like, if I'm going to get into questions from the guests, uh, the fans, everyone wants to know. The first question is, currently, are you in love? With who? Anyone. Just like, do you feel like you're in love with someone? Yeah. Okay. Are you single? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so two truths can still exist. <laughs> you can be in love and you can be single. Yeah, I'm still single. Um, one question that a lot of people were asking, which is, I think I'm curious too. How did you manage to forgive Harry and get back on good terms? Um, so I think it's kind of public knowledge that he had reached out once Demi and I, um, broke up and, um, I was going through a little rough situation with that whole breakup with her. Um, and he was really there for me. And we told ourselves like when he flew down to Cancun, we were like, okay, we're going to have one day together where we're not going to talk about any of the drama. And then we're going to have a day where we're just going to hash it out and go over everything that happened and like what we did to each other. So we kind of had a day where we chilled. It was so nice. It was so like, it was just, it felt like being home. Like it just felt really nice. And then the next day we hashed it out a little bit, but it's weird because like, we've definitely matured in our conversations. Like have been very like monotone. Like we, if one of us snaps, we quickly retract and apologize for overreacting or we, we've learned to communicate a little bit better. So, but I'm a really forgiving person, like in my past as well, like someone can do me so dirty and I'll still usually forgive them because I, I understand why people act certain ways. And I did some pretty fucked up shit, fucked up shit as well post breakup. And so did he, but we were just acting like, hurt people hurt people. And I think we are just acting out and I'm not going to dwell on the past. And I don't think there's time to waste on like being angry or sad about what happened because life's so short. So I'm just going to like focus on doing what makes me happy. And if being around him and being friends with him makes me happy, then that's what I'm going to do. And I don't really care what anyone else says. And then there was like cancel Francesca Fargo, like on tick, tick Twitter and like boycott her, whatever, all this stuff. But like, no one that posts these stuff knows what's going on and knows the real situation and knows these feelings that are involved. And I'm just gonna, yeah, like, as I said, do what, what, do what makes me happy because life's too short. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree with that. No one, it's like, I think everyone can always have so many opinions, including friends, but I think that's why for me, um, uh, some people were upset with me that they're, I'm like, they're like, have her listen to your bad bitch boot camp. Like that's your friend. Like, why are you, why are you like, 
allowing her to hang out with Harry, blah, blah. But like, in my opinion, people have to learn from their own experiences and their own mistakes or whatever. And in the end of the day, you're the one that's going to be in the relationship. You're the one that gets to love or get your heart broken and it's no one else. So I think it is really silly to sit there and be like me telling someone that she shouldn't do this or she should do that. Like I'm not in the relationship. It's like, it's her heart, it's her feelings. And I also was with somebody from 19 until 28. So um, on and off toxic relationship. So I think it would make me very, it would make me a hypocrite if I tell somebody to not make the mistakes I made when I, at one point when I was on and off with my ex, like I just stopped telling people because it got embarrassing. We kept getting back together, but like, I didn't care. I was like, I love him. Like, we're going to make this work. I don't care that he even cheated on me. Like, he's going to change. Yeah. He didn't. (laughs) Yeah. That's how it usually goes. Right. But you, I don't know. You always want to hope for the best. And plus, like, it's hard. Like, when you're just... Plus, like, Francesca and Harry went through something that no one else can relate. They have an experience that they share with one another that only the people from the cast can have that experience of that closeness. Yeah. It's really hard, too, to, like, even get over or forget about someone when it's like constantly being shoved in my face like any other relationship I've had like all the comments have been like what about Harry what about Harry I get messages about Harry every single day like since the show like every day I at least get like 10 messages about Harry and like comments about him I had to like mute his name on all my stuff and like even just like talking to him again like there's all these fan accounts that are coming back that are posting these like montages of like us being in love and like it's hard for anyone to see that and not like be curious of like could I have that again like Could we be friends only? Like, who knows, like, what's going to happen? But it would be, like, I would be doing myself a disservice to not, like, at least explore, like, a friendship with him and see what happens. I don't tell um, any of my friends really about what happens. Like, honestly, I talk to one of my fan accounts, um, Francesca Farago Updates. I tell her more than I tell, like, my best friends because she's, like, non-biased and, like, has, like, great advice. I'm just, like, too scared. Like, none of my friends, like, are really supportive. So... I mean, I'm like sitting right in front of you. I don't know. (laughs) No, not you. Not you, though. You're like the only one who's been like supportive and like open to the idea, but no one else has because you've been able to see him as well. Right. Yeah. Well, I think I understand the situation and and like you guys are young. You're going to like I said, you guys are going to do what you're going to do, because I think you and I are very similar. I think that's why you and I just get along so well. We are so different in so many ways. We were so similar in other ways. And I think uh I think I, so I understand you. So I know, knowing myself, I know that you won't listen to anyone else. When you want something, you love someone, that's what you're going to do. So why would I sit there and like get upset or get heated or try to save you when you don't need to be saved? Like I'm going to be your friend. And in two weeks, if he sucks and you're going to be like, he sucks, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I never liked the guy. And then in three weeks, you're going to be like, we're back together. And I'm going to be like, you know what? I have always loved him. Yeah, Yeah, he has great, he has great, he has nice muscular legs nice guy (laughs) great biceps great biceps yeah i mean he's really charming um what happened between you and demi so you had a girlfriend which i also met her but then it didn't work out it was amicable right yeah the breakup itself and what led to the breakup was amicable like there was nothing really bad that happened like the day that i she was leaving to go hang out with her family that day and i sat her like she noticed i was off and she sat down and i was like it's not like, it's not working. Like, you know, it's not working. And she agreed. And I was thinking that she was gonna be like, that's okay. Like, let's be friends. Like, I thought it was gonna be fine after that. Like, I thought we could be in each other's lives still. But it was like, like, after that conversation, it was like, I was done. Like, I was cut. Like, I was cut out for good, like, blocked, deleted, removed, like, told to leave the country. So I was really hurt by that. So everything that led to the breakup was normal, but it was stuff that happened post breakup that um, got a lot of scrutiny and like attention and like everyone picks sides and that was the hard part. So that's when Harry also was talking to me as well and like kind of being there for me, like helping me because me and Harry's breakup was public and messy and me and Demi's breakup was public and messy as well. So he was there for me during that. But yeah, it was, it was really hard post. You were getting like hate messages, like people were being really mean to you. And you were like, I remember you were so upset about it. And you were like, I will never 
involve myself again in a public relationship ever again from now on everything I do is going to be private yeah well people were messaging me telling me that if they saw me in London they were gonna like kick my dog and like throw my dog off a bridge like all this stuff so I was like pretty scared to like even go out but yeah I didn't want to make anything public ever ever again like if I do start dating Harry officially like I don't know if I'm ever gonna let anyone know like I'm yeah like yeah people know that we're talking because he's been posting but I don't even know like if we're just gonna be friends like I still don't know what's happening so if we do decide to like make it more official like we're probably gonna hold off by like ever announcing anything because it's just like I don't want to go through that again and no one knows what really happened and there's always so many sides to the story and there's always a victim in the situation like no matter what even if nothing bad happened there's someone that's going to be the victim and if you you're not the victim then like everyone hates you and like I feel like I got a lot of hate like ridiculous amounts of hate for the breakup and I really didn't do anything wrong minus I posted like a I thought it was a funny TikTok it obviously wasn't funny um that people decided to hate me for and I guess everyone is really upset a lot of people are really upset that Harry and I are on good terms now but at the end of the day it's not their life like if they don't like him or if they don't like me that's fine like unfollow us and move on like there's no point to like drag our names like constantly every single day like what we do doesn't concern you and yeah we make our life so public but if it's not something you want to look at then it's so easy like all you have to do is unfollow like it's that easy I feel like the haters are the ones that are the, the watching you the most like there's so, some people that are so involved that have been like watching everything since day one and then they comment like oh well she said this at two minutes in on this live two weeks ago and now she's saying this and then harry said this and then all this stuff and like putting together these puzzle pieces that don't really even make sense and just trying to like find a reason to like be more upset with me yeah do you think demi knows about human harry yeah of course i mean she knew that um like i she posted a story saying that she knew that I was talking to him again and I messaged her and I said the TikTok didn't wasn't meant like that um but I'm assuming yeah like there's articles online and I'm assuming that she would be aware but not that it really concerns her because the way she treated me post breakup was whatever so she obviously has zero like I don't nothing I do like like yeah maybe I'm being a little bit disrespectful but I felt really disrespected so I don't really like care to be honest like that part of my life is over with like realistically at the end of the day I met this person middle of January and I've I've known her for less than three months and the amount like I've known Harry for like since 2019 so it doesn't really compare and people can like it's not like I dated this person for three years like I've known her for two three months like that's how long I've literally known this person so yeah, maybe I was being a little bit disrespectful, but there's so many other feelings and things that were happening that no one was aware of that. I don't know. No, yeah, I I get that, especially because like you got together with the hopes of staying together. You weren't thinking you're going to break up and then it doesn't work out. Both both people are hurt, whether whether or not there's there's always going to be one person that's going to be hurt more, but it doesn't mean that the other person doesn't feel the pain for hurting that other person. But like, it's better to not be together if if you got if there's no more love left than it is to stay with somebody just because you feel bad for their feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if anything, like once you realize it's not working out, you did Demi a favor, so then she can find herself and she can find a partner that's more right for her. Mm-hmm. Um. Somebody asked if you would ever date a girl again, or are you more into guys? Um. I don't. I definitely don't have a preference. Um. I think it's all based on like who the person is and how they make me feel. I definitely like would be open to anything. I'm not like, I don't have a preference guy or girl. I've said like, I would date someone who's trans. I would date someone who's non-binary. Like I have zero preference. The only thing I care about is how that person makes me feel. Like I'm not even really big on looks. Like I don't care what you look like. Like you could have purple hair and like no eyebrows. And if you like make me feel good, then that is, all that matters to me yeah i used to have purple hair and no eyebrows so i understand that's why i like you (laughs) um yeah that um i can totally relate to that so have you spoken to demi since no no it was post breakup was pretty messy to be honest got pretty messy 
do you have um some people were asking if you because you and harry are speaking again if you have any beef with tenna i can't pronounce her last name i think it's mojo um no no we don't speak right is it weird that like you and her had a thing and then her and harry kind of had a thing i mean they didn't sleep together but like they kind of had a thing or something i don't know what happened with them all i know is that harry tells me that nothing ever happened with them so i just have to like believe him i guess okay yeah so um is it gonna be weird if you and harry hang out like for you to start hanging out with tana again because i know you guys are not on the best terms i don't really have any negative feelings towards her at all like I understand her lifestyle. There's certain things that she does and the way she lives her life. It's very public. And I don't have any hate. Like, I feel like anyone that I had beef with in this past year, like I don't have any hate towards anyone. Like I'm just really focusing on like what I want to do to make myself happy. And if I see her out and I feel like making amends with her would like be beneficial for both of us, then I would do that. Like I don't have like any negative feelings towards the situation at all like even though i was really upset about it at the time like now i just i don't really have any emotions towards it like i'm very monotone about what happened yeah that's good i agree i think it's always best to be on good terms i think like carrying hate in your heart it's so time consuming and it takes on so much of your energy and it's like for what yeah so I do I do like that approach. Is it bother you that since you're kind of more private when it comes to dating and really I mean you try to be and Harry's a little more public, is it hard for you to 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 do that? Like like obviously it's flattering for Harry to post things, but like obviously he's posting things before you're ready because you're not sure where you guys are at. Like is that hard because you guys are a little different in that way? Yeah, it's been a little difficult because I wanted everything to remain private and he he did agree and I guess like when you hang out and you get excited and you you realize that like there's so many fans like even though there is a lot um that are anti there are a lot that are very supportive and you do want to make them happy and you do want to let them know and keep them updated because you feel like it's like your like duty in a way to like keep people updated on what's going on but if it was up to me, solely up to me, I would keep it really private. But it's so hard. Like when I'm with him, like we're so used to posting it and stuff and like taking funny videos that like we just want to keep doing that. But in an ideal world, like there would be nothing posted at all until we at least figure out if we can like even get a long, long term. But like his podcast, he has a podcast episode tomorrow and I looked at his stories and you were just like, filling everything tomorrow and then it's like pictures of you two and he's like tomorrow's episode is going to come out like are you nervous about what he's going to talk about or did you guys talk about it before so there's some things that he has said in a few of his podcasts that have really upset me um and i've brought those to brought those issues to his attention so i am going to stupidly trust him and put my faith in his maturity levels and his growth that he's had this past year and hopefully he can be respectful and he has he has my trust he has my faith and hopefully he does not let me down hopefully yeah I hope so too so um yeah because I I do remember on a few of his other podcasts old ones he spoke directly about you on the podcast so like about other girls and you were just like what but hopefully it'll be different this week since you guys kind of got to really spend more time together and all that stuff. Fingers crossed. Too hot to handle. We rushed into things super quick. Um, when we got back together after the first breakup, we rushed into things really quick. He like, it was really quick. And then now we're just, we're going to do the opposite of what we did in the past that led us to failure So we're just going to start off as friends and see where that goes and hang out and get to know each other again, because we've obviously changed and grown like too hot to handle was filmed two years ago. So we're different people since then. And we're different people since last year as well. Um, So we're going to get to know our new selves and figure out like if we are compatible still, if our love love languages are the same, if we're, if it's just going to be friendship, I don't know, who knows but we're going to take it really slow and see, but it's hard. It's hard. Like I say, like, I want to take it slow and see if we can even be friends. And then he's posting pictures of us, like insinuating that we're still together. So, yeah. 
I mean, it is, it is, that part is wild. It's like Francesca literally won't even know what's happening. And then she looks at Instagram and there's like, r- Harry randomly decided to like post pictures of them like together. And she'll be like, oh, okay. He, he usually runs it by me. And, but I don't really have an opinion. Like I, I can't, it's not up to me what he posts. It's up to him. Like I could say, no, I don't really want that, but it's not like, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Like if that's what he wants to do, that's fine. He just has to be be prepared for the repercussions and yeah you just want to make sure that you just don't look stupid i think like that's usually why people want to keep it quiet for a second it's just to make sure like don't make me look like an idiot like i trust you don't make me look like a fool i am trusting him and i hope hope i don't regret it francesca where can people find you instagram tiktok i deleted twitter because everyone was mean as fuck um youtube only fans all that jazz yeah, you guys, um, you got to stop being mean to <laughs> creators on 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 social media. Like, I know you guys get very passionate about their uh, like our lives and it's really nice. But I think everyone sometimes wants to be creators, but they don't know the the bad stuff that comes with it. And that's the mean comments. Sometimes you say something mean and you think you're what the only one, but then you're really one of the like hundreds already of mean comments, mean DMs, mean tweets. And it just these people that you grew to love and one day you just decide that you hate them today because you're in a bad mood like they don't deserve to get all of that bad energy because remember your one comment is probably one of a hundred other mean comments and not we are all human beings so we're all all of us are going to have some bad days where we're not in the best like mental health in that day or that week and to see those comments sometimes it's going to bring us down even more and i know there's people out there that actually do want that and for those people I am so sorry for whatever you are going through in your heart that you feel the need to attack strangers. And I hope that whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever pain inside that you're dealing with, I hope that you heal from it and I hope that you work on it because taking it out on other people will not solve it and your pain is going to get heavier and heavier. So I really hope you take care of yourself first instead. Hey, hit him with the facts. Okay, so you guys don't forget to follow Francesca Francesca Farrago on all of our socials check out all of our TikToks maybe you guys will see us together in Miami if you have any questions um, DM her subscribe to her OnlyFans and to dream and yeah thanks for having me this was so much fun yes this was a lot of fun thank you so much for coming on I hopefully I get to see you soon have fun in Miami sweet Bye, guys. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Too Tired to Be Crazy. Don't forget to leave me a nice review. Follow Too Tired to Be Crazy on Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast. And I'll see you guys next week. Love you. Bye. Bye.